So up until recently, my studio was pretty much um, an analog to digital um, system where the analog signals came out of the various synthesizers I use uh, and other pieces of equipment uh, were fed through a digital I.O. box, which was my Scala 18i6, uh, into my, my DAW. And that worked really well um, until I started buying some new equipment. And I've invested in some of the ARIA stuff and some other new pieces of equipment. And all these pieces of equipment are now USB enabled, which means that they present themselves digitally to my Mac. Um, and that is great, apart from the fact there is a problem with uh, the digital presentation. And I'll show you what that problem is. I use Ableton predominantly as my DAW. And when I go into Ableton, um, which is on screen now, and I look to set up my preferences for audio sources, as in audio input and output, you'll notice at the moment I've got no device configured. So if I go to configure a device, what you see here is that it's asking me to, to set a single interface. So I can set my Scarlet, which was always my, my interface into the um, DAW. And that was great in the past because my Scarlet had all the audio channels coming in and was all, was all the audio channels going out. But now I've also got my Jupiter, my TB3, my TR8 and my System 1. And what this means is that unless I route the signals from those devices um, via an analog signal, as in plug a cable in the back of the, the audio outs of those devices and into the um, audio in on my Scarlet, um, I can't use those, I can't simultaneously record from those devices into Ableton. Um, and that sort of rather defeats the whole idea of having a digital input from Ableton uh, or from the device into Ableton. Um, there is a way to solve this, and it took me a while sort of searching around the internet to work out how to solve it. And it's something called an aggregated device setup. And this is how you do that. My um, audio MIDI setup, um, you look at the bottom of the screen and you'll see a plus and a minus um, button. So what you do is you press the plus button and you select from the menu create aggregate device. And what that does is it creates a shell for the aggregate device um, that you're just about to create. The next part of this process is to actually select which instruments from the USB inputs you want to assign to this aggregate device. So I want to assign in this particular instance um, my ARIA equipment which is System 1, TR8 and TB3. So I'm going to select those in the window on the right hand side and as I do that it starts to set up the input and output channels that are available with this de aggregated device. So what we now see is it's set up 18 channels, uh, 1 through 14 are my TR8, uh, 15 and 16 is my System 1 and 17 and 18 are my TB3. It also gives me um, eight output channels, uh, one through four being the outputs on the TR8, uh, five and six being the outputs on the system one, and seven and eight being the outputs on the TR TB3, should I wish to use them. The next thing you'll notice is that it gives me the uh, ability to select clock source for this input. Um, and it should list the clock sources available to me. So in this case, because it's the three R pieces of equipment. I've got the System 1, the TR8 and the TB3 to select from. Um, naturally I probably would keep the clock source as the TR8 purely because that's the drum machine and you want everything synced to the drum machine. Um, and finally you will select the sample rate. Now each of the uh, ARIA pieces of equipment that I've selected operate at 96 kilohertz so I only get one sampling rate. However, if I picked a piece of equipment that operated at a lower rate or was able to operate at multiple rates, 
multiple rates will be available to me in this screen. So in the background I've restarted Ableton um, and you have to restart Ableton once you've done this aggregate device setup because what Ableton does is it reads the available devices when it loads into memory. So if the device is not there when it loads it won't see that device uh, later on. It's not sort of when the device sort of becomes available it recognizes it in this particular um, or my experience of Ableton is it doesn't and therefore you have to uh, close Ableton down and then reload it. But if we now go to preferences in Ableton you'll see that if I click on the audio input device I now have that aggregate device with 18 in and 8 outs um, and I can select that and I can also select my output device which I'm going to use as my Scarlet. Okay, so that effectively has now set my Ableton to work with my new aggregate device which is a combination of my TB3, my System 1 and my TR8. The next thing to do while you're in the preferences screen for Ableton is to tell Ableton how you want the channels that are presented configured. So if I click on input for config like so, what it's telling me is that there are 18 channels available to me and I can configure those up either as stereo or mono channels. Now looking at the top of the screen you can see here my TRA operates channels 1 through 8, 14. Now I know that channels 1 and 2 on my TR8 are actually a, is the stereo master. So that's the master mix that's coming off the TR8 um, and therefore what I want is that to be stereo. Then channels uh, 3 through 14 are the individual instruments on my TR8 and therefore I want those to be mono channels so I leave those as mono. Then if I look up here it says 15 and 16 are my system 1 and I know that's the master outs in the system 1 so I want those to be stereo and similarly I want the TB3 to be a stereo out as well. If I then look at my output configuration as you can see on my output configuration I'm using my Scarlet which has six outputs and I want those to be assigned stereo so I've now uh, set those up as stereo so it's already done that for me but I could configure those as mono outs or stereo outs depending on what my requirement was. Now that I've done that that's my preferences set up on Ableton. So now that I've got the preferences set up. If I go to an audio channel in Ableton and I use the drop down here to say I want to select from external in and then if I click on the channel what I then see is I've now got the channels that I just set up in the preferences section available to me to record from. So I can record from my master bus on my TR8 um, the master output on my system 1 and the master output on my TB3 or I could record individual channels so the bass drum, the hi-hat, the cymbals etc from my TR8 on one of these mono channels that I've configured up here. So you're now all set to go to record from those instruments as in um, together at the same time. That's how you configure up an aggregate device.